So my work with science fiction and fantasy, I started uh, my career as a science fiction and fantasy illustrator. Uh, the market was very crowded then. I don't think it's ever been not crowded. Um, I found it hard to make a living as a fantasy and, and science fiction illustrator. Uh, but more than that, I, I kind of lost interest in the work when I realized what it was, what was involved. You're kind of anchored to the whim of the client and you're not really making your own work. And the work itself was kind of tedious. These very realistic fantasy paintings. My transition from science fiction and fantasy kind of illustration uh, into more expressive work really started by discovering a group of artists from Japan called Superflat. Um, Murakami is sort of the head of this group. Uh, I saw that there were artists out there making work that used the same visual language as fantasy and science fiction, um, and but used it to say very adult things about contemporary life in their society. Um, and it connected with me uh, because I kind of came out of a, a punk rock hardcore uh, music scene and so I, I'm kind of a very political kind of animal and I thought what a great thing that I can use uh, this the same kind of fantasy language to say something about society and say something about you know the, the world I live in well uh, it always goes back to childhood um, the first time I ever taught myself how to draw I was copying drawings from comic books specifically ElfQuest by Richard and Wendy Penny. Uh, and I was pretty young. I was probably about eight or nine years old. And, you know, even as a teacher now, I sort of in, uh, encourage my students to copy, you copy for masters to learn how to, um, to learn how to draw, to learn how to create art. Um, so it was, you know, early on it was the comic books. It was Dungeons and Dragons. It was also like MTV and just pop culture from the eighties. That was sort of a foundational, period for me and especially that time was so it was almost like aggressively visual a lot of neons a lot of like very flashy art um, pop art was big um, all of that stuff sort of influenced me at an early age as I got older like I said it was uh, artists like the Japanese artists from the super flat movement. There was also an art collective in the United States called Fort Thunder. These were these sort of punk kids in Rhode Island. They, they were very under the radar, uh, punk bands, noise projects, uh, but they were also printmakers and painters and sculptors, and they made elaborate costumes. And it was the same kind of thing, using this sort of fantasy language to uh, maybe express something a little more personal. Um, so I would name like those two specific collectives, Superflat, Fort Thunder are probably my biggest influences. So the work that I'm exhibiting at Fuego this month, uh, it's mostly newer work. Uh, I have been working digitally a lot lately. Uh, I call them digital paintings and they are, there's a relationship between the digital and the physical paintings. It's this sort of back and forth I'll scan paint marks and use them in the digital paintings. And then the digital paintings will sometimes act as sketches for paint for future paintings. And it's this back and forth uh, in process that I'm really interested in, as well as um, discovering new processes, new technologies. I make stencils with a laser cutter, sort of tech digital quality to them that I, and I kind of like the juxtaposition, the sort of paradox between like this very uh, clearly computer generated sort of look uh, mixed with very natural organic. And I think there's that sort of back and forth in the processes where the paintings and the digital work feed each other. But I like to think that it also says something about our sort of current society where our, our lives are also connected uh, to technology that we, uh, technology is sort of integral to our sort of social lives, the way we communicate with each other. Um, it's hard now in 2019 to extract yourself from your sort of online persona or you know Instagram. Um, it's just become such a part of our lives. And I think a, li and a little bit of what I'm doing is commenting on that. 
I'm Shane Durge. I have an exhibition called Bogus Ascension at Fuego, and it will be on display for the month of September. Come on by and see it.